Lucas, congratulations on your nomination for the South African of the Year Awards. How did you fall in love with tennis? I fell in love with tennis in 2006 when I first hit my international tournament, uh, which was in uh, Holland. And then from there, coming back there, and then I started to, to practice the sports, and then I started to, to do it every day, you know. Uh, and then I started to, to practice every day, and then I tried to, to, to keep my focus on the sports, and then, yeah, that's where I am today. It wasn't just tennis. You played basketball and other sports. Are you just a natural sportsman? Uh, I think so. I think uh, <laughs> uh, sports is in my blood, uh, you know, uh, because since I was young, I was uh, doing sports, but then now and then I chose to, to do the tennis as a professional sport. Lucas, of course, it was a very tragic accident that uh, you met up in when you were 12 years old. Um, was that probably the biggest challenge you had in your life? Uh, I can say yes and no. <laughs> Because it, uh, some other hands, uh, it gave me a lot of uh, opportunities in life, you know, to be where I am today. Uh, I think it's because of uh, that blessing. <laughs> it's not an accident to me, it's a blessing. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but um, um, there's nothing for me to, to, to complain, you know, uh, because I'm, I'm still going strong. I'm, st I'm still trying to do more than what I have done, you know, so. Lucas, you are the first African, the first South African to win a US and a British Open. I mean, that in itself is an achievement. The day that you actually won those tournaments, what was going through your mind? Nothing much was going through my mind except that playing more of my game, uh, you know, like showing my skills uh, to, to other countries, you know, try. I was trying to improve by those times, but then the results were, were very good. They were the results that the coach uh, wanted. So uh, after all, I was, I was happy, you know, I was happy, you know, to, to get their points uh, so that I uh, improve my ranking as improved now. But I still think uh, this, uh, I can still improve it more mm -hmm. in the next uh, six months coming, so which is good for me. David Wagner didn't realize what hit him when you came onto the scene. What was it like beating the world number one? Oh, it was good, you know, uh, because I always wanted to beat him uh, because he's been there for like uh, more than 15 years on the block. So he's got the whole experience. So it was good for me to beat him because I was learning <laughs> from his mistakes, you know. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, he he was very good on court. He was smart and clever. He pushed me to, my <laughs> to, to play uh, my highest tennis ever. So I always like to play him, you know, because he's a good competitor. He gave me that extra ball, you know, which I need to always to keep an eye on it, which I need to always keep my concentration on the game. So playing him, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a very good thing, you know, because it keeps me uh, more motivating, more motivated and more hunger. And, you know, it keeps me more going stronger forward, you know. How, how did that win change your life? Uh, it did but not the way I wanted it. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it automatically changed, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, also to the kids, you know, uh, when I look back now to the kids who are coming in now to, the, to join the sport, you know. It's, I don't know how, how to put it, you know, but for me, it, it was a good feeling. Lucas, you're a very positive person. How do you remain positive? I try by all means to, to, be, to be myself, you know, to, to live my life that I want to live, you know, to do what I need to do, you know, which is going to benefit me at the end of the day. I think those are the only things, you know, which keep me positive and more motivated. What are some of the biggest challenges you've had in your life and how do you overcome them? Uh, I had a lot of uh, challenges, you know, in my life, um, like using the wheelchair uh, and also going to your public sp spaces. Uh, most of them are not, they are not more accessible for the wheelchair users, and especially to the tax ranks and to the taxes itself. You know, it's not easy for a disabled person to, to go around from city to city when you don't have your own car or something like that. But now it's coming all right since they introduced rear vias and how trains. It's a little bit better now. Do you think since you burst onto the scene and people knew who Lucas Itole was and it sort of raised um, it raised the status of disabled sports. Do you think now things are getting better for athletes wanting to come into the sport and just people in general? Oh yes, I, I, I think so. But there's still a lot of room which needs to be, to be filled. But it's step by step, you know, it, it, it's coming all right. Uh, because people, they see that I'm on a wheelchair, but I can do what I need to do. So also they get inspired and motivated. And especially to the young kids, you know, because I normally visit the, the schools, mostly the primary schools, you know, because it's easy to, to tell the kids what to do than to tell a person at your age, you know. Yeah, but uh, I think it's, it's coming all right. I think, I think the perspective that people they used to see now, it's, it to, to nowadays, is, is changing, you know, because we, at, that, at the last four years, we, we, we used to get um, 
noticed when we've done something well you know in, in the sport or when we're going to the paralympics or when you're going to the commonwealth games but now things are changing step by step but finally they're going to be you know more better and better and better for the pe people who live with disability in sport what inspires lucas Sitwole? what uh, inspires me is that um my family you know uh we i grew up in the rural areas so you know by being where i am today you know i still want to do more so that so that i can go back and help the other kids who also grew up in the rural areas and to show them that there's nothing impossible in life how difficult was that for you coming into stardom i mean everybody knows who lucas itwale is they want his autograph they want to do interviews with him how difficult was it Oh, it was very difficult, you know, because I have to move from my own way to, you know, to, to accommodate other people, mm. you know, because of what I have done, you know, which they were happy. So I couldn't say no, because, you know, always when people, they support you, you get that extra kick, you know, mm. extra boost that, you know, that uh, your country is behind you always. So it was difficult, but at least I managed to, to do it with the help of my coach and the organization manager, Karen. So, um, Lucas, if you weren't going to be a tennis player, what would you be? Me, musician. Mascani um, music. We heard you singing in studio and it was absolutely beautiful. Is that your second love? Oh, yes. Uh, that's my second love. Uh, since last year, I dropped my first album. And then uh, next week, I'm going to drop my new album. It is called Lucas Sitole, as in Tabeni. So yeah, I'm hoping to, for you to, to do well. So. Tell us what about your music. What do you write about? Talk about education uh, and the youth. Uh, that's where I'm mostly focusing, and the people who live with disability, and also the people who live in the rural areas. You know, that's that's my most uh, thing, which I like to, you know, to to give out to the people. Do you write your own music? Yes, I write my own music. And what do you hope this album will achieve? It's not all about money in this album, you know, but it's more of educating the people about the different things. You know, I've, I've traveled around the world, so I know, I, I know some of the things, you know. So that's why I'm trying to put it together in the music and give them the message. Maybe they can see it on the other way. So I'm hoping for it to, 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 to inspire a lot of people, mostly to uh, the young kids and some to the old people. <laughs> Yes. Um, what are some of your hobbies? What are you doing when you're not playing tennis? Uh, I just go out with my friends and yeah, that's the only thing I do. Um, go to, to the parties and everything. And are your friends quite proud of you? Oh yes, they are. Then when I'm away, they, yeah, you know, they give me all those messages that they come back now, it's been long, you know. Yeah, but they also give me the motivation uh, messages to, to keep going strong on, on tennis, you know, because they know that my first love is on tennis. So, yeah, they are my biggest friends. Um, tell us, are you a good traveler? Of course, you've traveled all around the world to so many different uh, countries. How difficult is it to live out of a suitcase? It's very difficult, you know, oh, uh, especially for a person like me, you know, uh, you, the, the people, the people, they think that uh, you can't even move out of your seat uh, because you need the island chair, especially in the aircraft. But for me, it's, yeah, it's very difficult. You know, that's the most difficult through traveling from my seat to the, to the bathroom in a plane. It, yeah. And since I don't have much balance when the, when we reaching the, mm -hmm. the turbulence, yeah, that's, that's scary for me. Do you find all these challenges just make you a stronger person? They, 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 they actually build me, you know, because each and every day there are different challenges I face, you know, and there's, uh, there's uh, different ways to, to, to face them, you know. So they, they, they build me stronger and stronger and stronger. And obviously you, you are proudly South African. Tell us what is your favorite place in South Africa? It's Newcastle. Why? Uh, Newcastle is more accessible, it's more friendly, you know. The, the infrastructure they're coming in with it now and the roads, uh, they're very, they very nice, they're very smooth. The people there, I don't know if it's, it's only me, but I find it very nice to go there. You know, I can even leave my car without locked. There's nothing going to happen. You know, I don't know how, how they live, but the way they live it, it's, it's good. It's, it's very good. Yeah. I can go there and stay for it. Forever. And if you just don't know, that is your hometown. Of yeah, course. it is my hometown. Is this what you'd like to see in South Africa? People just being friendly and uh, courteous to, to fellow South Africans? Oh, yes. Uh, this is the thing I, I would love to, to see, especially on the disabled sports, you know, because when we when we playing, most of the time, when we're playing locally, we never have uh, the, the support. Like last year, when I played the British, the stadium was full. When I played the US Open, the stadium was full. This year, when I won the Japan Open in um, April, 
the stadium was full. You know, I would also like to to see South more South African people to come watch the the, the disabled sports. Not only in tennis, but maybe also athletics or which basketball or whatever. As long as if it's the people they give us the support that they give to the other sports, which I can name them, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, it should be good for us. What is your dream for Paralympians in South Africa? I would like to see most of us being supported as the other mm -hmm. sports, you know, to so that we can uh, reach our goals easier and faster. Yes. What would you say? Uh, you've just come to the peak of your career in the past couple of years. What is your proudest moment in life? Not just your career, but in life so far. My proudest uh, career in life was uh, when I when my first <laughs> when my first son was born. That was the proudest ever. Is he? Does he look up to his dad? I can't say because he's he's still young. He's like uh, three years. So, but I I wish that when he grows up, that he's gonna try to, to do mostly what, I, what I've done and try to, to do more than what I've done, you know, but in a, in a very positive way and respectively. It must be so special to see him grow, grow up every single day, uh, learn how to talk. Yeah, hey, now he's been all over the house, he crawled over the house, mm -hmm. took out the cupboards, my, some of my trophies there are, now they are off because of him. But, uh, you know, it's, for me, I just love him when he's growing. What advice do you have for youngsters, uh, not just uh, um, wanting to play sports, but just in general? All I can say is that um, we all make the choices, but it's up to us if we, we make the right choices. Because nowadays, what I've seen is that we make the right choices at the wrong time and the wrong, the wrong choices at the right time. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the, the timing. We need to, to, to also go with the timing. And the time changes and the generation changes. You know, we, we can't also be stuck to what our fathers did. We need to do what we have to do at this time. Because what they did at that time was right for that time. But what we have to do in this time is right at this time. And there is nothing impossible, you know, except yourself. You're the only one who can stop you from achieving whatever you want to achieve in life. What would you tell people that have actually gone through a tragedy like you have to just get up and, you know, face the world and make changes? Yeah, at first you need to accept yourself uh, before you can go out to people for people to accept you, you know, and then you can't, you can't just wait at home to, 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 to get help. You need to go out and look for help to achieve whatever goals that you have in mind. You know, so that's what, uh, that's what uh, I, I did and it, and it worked for me and it can work for someone else, but not the way as it worked for me, but different ways. But you can't just stay at home and wait for help. You need to go out there and, and, you're, gonna, and you're gonna get help and you're gonna achieve what you want to achieve in your life. Lucas, what makes you proudly South African? Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, which make me to be proudly South African. You know, we're the only country of living in, official languages, you know, and it happens that I, I can speak only nine of them, which is good, I feel proud, you know, and the people, you know, who live in South Africa, like most of the people around the world, when they visit South Africa, they think that we're going to be sharing rooms with lions and snakes and everything. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but now when they see us out there, like being South Africans yes. now, so that they get a different picture, so that's what makes me feel good. Lucas, why should people vote for you for the South African of the Year? Because I think this would be, it's, gonna, it's not only going to motivate me, you know, but also the other people who live with disability in South Africa, since we being not in a page where we want to be. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, that's what I can say. And people have seen what I have done um, in the past, and I can still do it again. And the other people who live with disability, they can also do it. They can also, you know, because there's nothing impossible. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, but whatever you want to achieve, as long as if you put your hard work on it and you, your determination is on it and the self-discipline, which counts a lot, which uh, we tend to forget about it, and, but which is um, one of the most, words, uh, most key words which you can use for a real sport person, you know, and yeah. But for me, a real champion knows how to, knows the feeling of losing and knows the feeling of winning, so he learns from them. So, you know, losing this uh, category, 
I'll still be going strong. Lucas, just very quickly, um, we're here at the UJ Tennis Courts and we saw you in training. How def- how um, demanding is your day before a big tournament like the US Open and the British Open? Oh, yes, it's very demanding. You know, I, I put now, because I'm going to these big tournaments, I, we try to put more work on the, um, on, on, on the court, uh, like twice a day. So which going to make me, you know, more stronger than I was before. Uh, also going to keep my focus on the court because it's been a lot happening around uh, since uh, last year. So now we're trying to, to get back to, to that page where we all started. So now we, we, I've been playing a lot of tournaments around. So I've been seeing the patches. So now we're trying to fix the patches so that the road can be smooth again. So that I can go on, on winning again. Because we can't lose the winning recipe now. Because 2016 is just around the corner. So we need to keep uh, pushing very hard. We have absolutely no doubt in you. How difficult is to uh, is it to balance your career and your family life? It's very challenging, uh, especially for my fiance and my kids, uh, because I'm always away, even if I'm around South Africa, but I'm always traveling mm-hmm. around the country. It's, it's it's difficult, but at least they are, they are understanding, you know, because every time when I have a time, I always go down to Newcastle and visit them for a weekend or a week, uh, which is is good. <laughs> But it is very challenging. But I hope that they, they will understand and they will see my job at the, at the end of the day. So, yeah. And they are my biggest fans. Lucas, lastly, what is your dream in life? What do you hope to achieve? Where is your pinnacle? My goal now uh, is, is, to, is, to, is to reach that spot for, world, for being world number one, which is not far. Uh, you know, I'm world number two now. I just need more tournaments. Mm-hmm. Then, for sure, I'll be number one soon. We have absolutely no doubt. And we wish you all the best for the future. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you.